Wait, 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 wait. Miss Celestial has prophesied about President Donald Trump. She has prophesied about President Donald Trump and also Barack Obama. Make sure y'all pay attention to this full video, man. Be sure to like and share the video as well. It is that Donald Trump will die embattled. One sentence. Celestial, he will die embattled. To be embattled, if I can give you a picture, it is when you go outside to work in your yard and you see what looks like a small wasp's nest. It, it looks small and you think about it and you don't think you need to go back in and get a helmet and put on long sleeves. You think that perhaps if you give it one good whack with the rake, you can hit it far enough so that it might even go to the edge of the pool or something, but it will not be as big as you think it is. And you hit that thing and you find that it's 10 times the size that it looked. And those wasps all come out and they look at you in your red t-shirt and they surround you and they begin to sting you from head to foot. Exactly like America's golden boy, ex-president Donald Trump is being stung from head to foot. Every five seconds, breaking news this, the judge says he is a liar. The judge says this and that. Embattled means set upon on all sides. It's being chased down the streets by every dog in the neighborhood because all the neighbors forgot to shut their yards and you're walking by and then suddenly there's 12 dogs after you, 15 dogs, and you're running by yourself and not a single owner is coming and going, here boy, here boy, more dogs join in. God says that this is how this man is going to lose his life. Go down in infamy. These are not new prophecies. So, the prophecies concerning Barack Obama are these. In quick succession, America in turmoil, July 16, 2019. The Iron Spider, November 8, 2019. And I will mention a little bit, a uh, vision from this prophecy, November, I think it's November 8, 2019, but in this prophecy, I saw, I saw Barack Obama, he was riding on the waves of the sea. He was riding on the waves of the sea and he was coming in fast towards land. Excuse me, please. He was coming in fast towards land. He was so eager to make landfall and he was part of the sea. So the sea was very stirred up. The sea was very angry. The sea was heaving. The sea was very chaotic and the bottom part was water. But then the waves ro ro rose into a very, very, one particularly very high wave. You know, I think they called it a white cap. It rose very high, but the thing about the water is it was so dirty. It was so filthy. It looked as if several loads of heavy laundry had been run in that same water. And at the very top, his legs were forming out of the seawater, and then he was in a suit and the wave was curving in towards land and there was Barack Obama at the very top leaning in with so much interest with this lust with this hunger to make landfall and what the Lord said is that Obama will come in on almost a wave of popular opinion and once again I will caution those who are listening there's a tendency of people to try and process prophecy through their own filters. So whatever you think, unfortunately, the little blunt knife and fork that certain people have available, that's what they try to cut this tough beef that God has given me for prophecy. Because this is not for the faint of heart. These prophecies will change you or they will defeat you. There are no other outcomes. You will either change or you will be defeated by them, by the spirit of fear and hopelessness and depression. The choice is yours because there's no fainting here in the end times. The Bible tells us that men's hearts will fail, but what it doesn't tell you is that you have a choice to decide whether you're gonna be one of that scripture or not. Whether it's you in Luke 21 that it's talking about or not. So people will listen to the Lord saying that he will return on a wave of popular opinion and then they will say but he's not popular we hate them no you hate him 
So you assume that the entire world is your little heart that can't comprehend that God is speaking of a time where people's brains will be cooked like noodles, like ramen that's been on the stove too long. God is speaking of a time where people will make the most nonsensical choices. And why will they make it? Because spiritual power will be leaking into the world. Every portal on earth and in heaven will be open. You might not even remember your name in the future. So you're thinking with your 2023 brain, your 2023 understanding, your 2023 little box of feelings. I don't see him coming back. Nobody likes him. People will love him. They will love him. They will cry over him the way misguided little girls used to cry over Michael, Michael Jackson. And worse will they do when they see him on sight. The demons and the witchcraft that man will be moving with. He will pass by and a woman will say, Harry, I'm leaving you. And go join his harem. People will go missing in his era. I have seen them go missing. It is in my notes. I have never said it. I will say it on camera now. The Lord showed me. This is from the times that God was showing me that Christians will go and work in the White House. And those who are called to go and work in the White House. The Lord says that you are being selected. You will be selected and you will be brought forth. Obama will include for a time period Christians in his government. He will. And the reason that he will do that is because he will start out with subterfuge and lies. As always. And he will want to appear, as he did the first time, the faithful and loving church man. So he will select Christians. I saw them going there. Some of them moved there and they had no idea what they were doing in Washington, D.C. They were unpacking in their new government paid for apartments, clueless and seeking in their hearts, Lord, have I made the right decision? And the Lord was comforting them and saying, I, who brought Joseph into the palace? Who gave Esther that husband? Who lifted David from the sheepfold? Who put them in halls of power? Who told you, Christians, that the halls of power have to be clean and match what you think? That it has to be the new wave nouveau Christian government before it's okay for you to go and work there. God does things that cannot be searched out. He does things that cannot be understood. He put Moses under Pharaoh's nose to raise the prophet that would destroy the Egypt that was at that time enslaving his people. Who can search out the mind of Yah the Great? No one, definitely not people of this modern era who think that they hear a prophecy and then it's like, I don't feel, I don't feel that he's popular enough. Can you imagine thinking that you have to agree that the beast out of the Bible, you have to feel he should be popular enough before he can be the beast. What if you are six feet under when he begins beasting? What is the value of the feelings and the opinion and, and the chitter chatter then? God is going to elevate people very swiftly, but the warning I am told to bring is this, same as the prisoners, if you are lifted to a prominent place and you end up being a stooge for the devil, if God opens doors in the palace for you and brings you into place where they're talking money, power, influence, social changes that will affect districts, that will affect your county, your country, your state, your region, then God brings you and gives you a seat at that table. And instead you begin to become a doorway for demons. Everybody is going after work for the shabli and the after work drinks and they're going to get falling down drunk and you're like well you know i don't want to be weird and everything so i'm going to go with them and i'm just going to drink le lemonade really can you can you drink the cup of the lord and drink the cup of devils can you sit at the table of the lord and sit at the table with demons if you become a doorway for demons if you become a stooge for the devil if you begin to operate as a half and half unfaithful steward God says you will fall out of that position just as fast in just as shocking a fashion as you were put there. The same way he said that whoever comes out of jail and starts to violate their probation and begins to run with the same pack of wolves who got you in jail in the first time, you will be back in jail before you can cough. Is the same thing he says that if he raises you up 
and you begin to compromise righteousness in that position, you will fall out of that position just as fast as he put you there because God is looking for faithful stewards, people who can hold their new positions for years, people that he can even promote higher than where he will put them because he wants them to represent his interests in the modern world. First time I got this prophecy was in 2020 and I brought it faithfully many times on my Facebook. I was not yet um, on YouTube. God had said to me that I've prepared people in every walk of life. So this is not only raising you up in the church. The church is be so insular in many ways. We think that all of life is being chosen to be a youth pastor. So everybody should aspire to be a youth pastor. Doesn't matter if someone was born to be an athlete. Doesn't matter if someone was born to be is a whiz with numbers. Doesn't matter if somebody has superior gifts in understanding, um, I don't know, sentient AI and things like that. The church just feels, well, to be truly Christian, you should be serving in the church. And it doesn't work like that. We are all gifted differently. If God calls you to the house, calls you to the ministry, then by all means, you have to be a house steward, a house minister. But if God is calling you to be a whiz in the business world, then why are you trying to be, I don't know, a, a deaconess or, or assistant pastor? That's not your place. We excel when we run in our lane. God says that he will shift unfaithful people out of high places in all walks of life because he has prepared Davids to replace the Sauls, the unfaithful people who abuse their position. I have been saying this, at least on Facebook, since 2020. Unfaithful stewards who have wasted the master's resources are going to fall and they will be replaced with faithful people who put the agenda of Jesus first. America, you are upset because all the teachers have rainbow colored hair and are trying to low key. It's not even low key. It's as obvious as the nose on our faces. They are trying to push their multi, um, multi blended Zay Zu Z, um, sexual, highly sexualized agenda on small children instead of teaching them that two plus two is four. What is the difference between green and yellow and things like that? We are upset. And at the same time, Christian people are not becoming teachers or they're being stifled by the policies. And instead of trying to band together or do something to push back against this, we're just having angry parents meetings. And yet policies are still not favoring the righteous. So that means that the righteous need to understand that they need to begin to multiply themselves in places where the territory is being lost or shocker the territory will continue to be lost and so god had said that he would give away the seats of unfaithful stewards entitled stewards in shocking twists of circumstance he said that people who have been holding office in the united states and they've just been running and keeping the space running and keeping the space he said he was going to shock them out of those long-term positions they were going to be tumbled out of there by literal nobodies who would run on their own personal ticket and take their place. He said that even presidents would not be safe from this fall. And since I began to bring this word, we've seen it fulfilled in Haiti, in Sri Lanka. Now, even in England, we are seeing it and Venezuela. He said that he would give those spots to hard workers who were next in line. So it would be a natural pro progression that the unfaithful steward would fall and the faithful person who was next in line, who was always being overshadowed by that unfaithful person, would get the position. So this is a visible person who's in the company, but is being overlooked because the unfaithful person kept taking the seat. The unfaithful choir director kept being elected every cycle. I will say this, when it comes to prophets and prophetesses, People are not always going to believe them, especially living in this day and time, right? And this is what I have to say about that. If you believe in God so much, in the word and the scriptures that are in the Bible, if you believe in God and, and Christianity and the Bible so much, and God was doing those things back then he was using people back then people were prophesying back then so why is it that people 
are so, so reductive to not believe that prophets still can exist today. That's all I want to know. Why can't prophets still exist today? So you're trying to tell me that God can't use people like he used them back in the day? And what's interesting about this is that this prophet is Miss Celestial has prophesied on things that have come to pass. T.D. Jakes, she prophesied about it before it all blew up in the scandals. I know it got kind of quiet on his end now because that's what some people do. They just think they can be quiet and things will just go away. Mr. Tony Evans, she prophesied about him what, two years ago, three years ago? It has come to pass. So when you begin to see the things that one has spoken on, prophesied about, a message from the Lord that they claim they have received, and they go forth and speak of this message, and it comes to pass, what do you call that? And then some people say, well, she said this, this, and that, and that ain't happened. Let me tell you something about a prophecy, brother. It can be 5, 10, 20, 30 years from now before that prophecy fulfills itself. Some's happen quicker than others. Yeah, see, y'all thinking that uh, she's speaking these things and they're supposed to happen tomorrow or the next day or next week. If you were really in two reading your Bible and your scripture texts, you would know how these prophets operate. You would know how God used these prophets. And it's strange to me to be believers in Christ thinking that he's not still using people like he did back in the day. That's the strangest thing for me. So that's kind of like saying, oh man, the Holy Spirit don't, 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 don't operate like it used to back in the day. No, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's grounded in truth. God is grounded in truth. God has still been using people since the beginning. He ain't stopped using people. See, God has never stopped using people to get his point across. To warn people. He has not ever stopped doing that. We just live in a generation now that is so worldly that people can't even see in the spirit. People cannot see in the spirit because we live in this worldly, fleshly place. So anything spiritual is really just going over our heads or people just too quick to call it a lie or people so quick to call, uh, just man, I, I just don't understand it. If you believe in God, then you believe in all errors and aspects of what he can do. And that the enemy is here to con you. The greatest con Satan never pulled was making people believe that he doesn't exist. Say, man, hope y'all like the video. Drop down in the comments. I want to know your thoughts and opinions on this. Be sure to like and share the video as well.